If I ask you right now to think about a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, this is probably what springs to mind. Although Royal Caribbean have always had big and exciting cruise ships, what we thought was a big and exciting ship in the past is actually quite small now. In this video, we're gonna have a look at all of the cruise ships that Royal Caribbean has sold. Some of them are still sailing, some have been scrapped, some have had murders on board, some have had huge accidents. You name it, it has happened on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship and we're gonna cover it in this video. Before we get into this week's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I bring you weekly cruise tips, tours, and news on this channel to help you cruise well on a budget and ultimately cruise more often. Legend of the Seas and Splendor of the Seas were sister ships built in 1995 and 1996. Both of the ships hold around 2,000 passengers and they feature things like rock climbing walls and miniature golf courses that we're all used to on Royal Caribbean ships. These things might not sound very interesting when you compare them to the things we see on modern cruise ships, but for the time, these cruise ships were incredibly exciting. In 2017, both of the cruise ships were sold and they went on to become the TUI Discovery and the TUI Discovery 2 for Thompson. They were later rebranded as the Morella Discovery and the Morella Discovery 2 when Thompson rebranded as Morella in 2017. If you don't know who Morella are, they're a British cruise line who do all-inclusive cruises, but not at that crazy all-inclusive price. They've only got four cruise ships at the moment, so itineraries are quite limited. But if you can find a Morella cruise, they're not too expensive, and you get to cruise on some ex-Royal Caribbean ships. I like Morella. I like Morella. I've personally cruised on Splendor of the Seas as Morella Discovery, and she's one of my favorite cruise ships. Despite being from the 90s, you would never know that when you wander around this ship. There are some features that are distinctly Royal Caribbean. The ship has the bar around the funnel, it has the big atrium, it has a big main dining room. If you're a Royal Caribbean cruiser and you step foot on this cruise ship, you're gonna feel very at home. In fact, some areas on this cruise ship have hardly changed at all. If you have a look at the theater, the seats are the same, the curtain is still the same, the main dining room is almost the same too, and the atrium, it's barely changed at all. Soft furnishings and things have changed, but it's undeniably a Royal Caribbean ship. I suspect that these two cruise ships will be sailing with Morella for the foreseeable future, which is good because it means these Royal Caribbean cruise ships still have a lot of life in them. And rightly so, they are amazing ships. Monarch and Sovereign of the Seas were sister ships built in 1987 and 1991. At the time, Monarch of the Seas was one of the largest cruise ships in the world. She held 2,700 passengers, which by modern standards is relatively small, but back in 1991, this was considered to be a really big ship. The largest Royal Caribbean ship that's currently sailing is over 6,000 passengers. So in comparison, she's pretty small. Monarch of the Seas wasn't built with things like rock climbing walls on board, but Royal Caribbean did add one in 2003 because you can't have a Royal Caribbean cruise ship without a rock climbing wall. These ships that were built in the late 80s and early 90s are the first cruise ships that feel very, very Royal Caribbean-y. They've got these big atriums that have big glass elevators, a piano. They kind of feel like snazzy hotels. I think that's kind of the vibe they were going for. And it's one that if you've cruised with Royal Caribbean, you'll be very, very used to. In 1988, the Monarch of the Seas was evacuating a passenger in the Netherlands where she accidentally grazed the bottom of her ship on the reef. The reef cut a two meter slit in the side of the ship and the ship started taking on water. The cruise ship's made up of lots of watertight compartments and three of them were completely flooded. Luckily, no lives were lost, but the damage to the ship was pretty severe and it had to go into dry dock for three months to make repairs. The Monarch of the Seas has had a lot of things happen to her and happen on board her. In 2006, the captain of the Monarch of the Seas was found dead in his cabin. It wasn't anything suspicious, but he was only 38, so it's very sad. In 2007, Monarch of the Seas was the first and only mega cruise ship at the time to be captained by a woman, a Swedish lady called Corinne. Go Corinne! We need more female captains. I know we have a few at the moment, but back in 2007, she was the first and she was the only, and she was the only for quite a while. Back in April of 2013, Monarch and Sovereign of the Seas were transferred to Pullman Tour Cruises. Pullman Tour Cruises are a Spanish cruise line who are partly owned by Royal Caribbean. So Royal Caribbean basically just moved these ships to their Spanish parts. Unfortunately, Pullman Tour didn't make it through 2020. The cruise line is no more. And these ships, as a result, have been scrapped. Moving backwards now to 1990, and the first cruise ship that wasn't built for Royal Caribbean, this cruise ship was called the Viking Serenade. 
The ship was originally built as a cruise ferry called Scandinavia and they had to do quite a lot of work to transform her from a cruise ferry into a cruise ship. There are actually a couple of murders that happened on board this cruise ship. Murders do happen at sea. If you put that many people together at some point, some of them will kill each other. There was a murder on board this cruise ship in 1988 where a man murdered his wife and he threw her overboard. He tried to make it look like she drowned, but they did work out that it was a murder. There was a very similar murder again in 2006. What I find quite interesting about this ship and the fact that murders happened on this cruise ship is that this cruise ship doesn't have private balconies. So if you're going to throw someone off a cruise ship, you'd either have to be on a top deck, which I don't know. In 2002, the ship was transferred to Island Cruises, which was half owned by Royal Caribbean. She sailed as the MS Island Escape. There was a plan for this cruise ship back in 2016. The plan is that she would be a floating hotel for asylum seekers. That never happened and she was just sold and then eventually scrapped in 2018, which is a shame, I think. The Song of America was built in 1982 and she is one of the luckiest ex-Royal Caribbean ships. I've actually sailed on her in the last couple of years, but that's not why she's lucky. She is lucky because she is still sailing. Most cruise ships that were built in the early 80s are not still sailing. That's quite old for a cruise ship. Song of America was built with quite an interesting design. On deck five and deck seven, they've actually one and a half times the height of the ceiling, which is all well and good. And those two decks do seem very spacious. But what this means is that deck six is only on half of the cruise ship. When I cruised on this ship, it did take a bit of getting used to because you can't walk along deck six. It just doesn't exist. Another feature about this cruise ship that definitely ages her is the fact that all of her cabins are at the front of the ship, the idea being that the engines are at the back and you should keep the cabins away from the engines. On modern cruise ships, you don't have to do that. The engine noise doesn't really travel. But as somebody who's cruised on this cruise ship, I can confirm that you definitely feel vibrations and you do feel some movement on a ship of this age, especially when you're sailing away from port, everything kind of starts shaking. In 1998, Song of America was sold to Sun Cruises and there she became Sunbird. I think if you have a look at this picture, you can definitely tell that she is a Royal Caribbean style ship. It has got that Royal Caribbean bar around the funnel. I've been in a few Royal Caribbean bars around funnels and I have to say that this one was particularly vibrating. You really felt like you were on a cruise ship when you were in this bar. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. It has amazing views all the way around, but it, it definitely was something different from what I'm used to. From 2005 onwards, the Song of America was chartered to Thompson Cruises. She was renamed Thompson Destiny, and I know so many people loved this cruise ship when she was sailing as Thompson Destiny. In 2012, Thompson Destiny returned to Louis Cruises and she was renamed Louis Olympia. She sailed under that name until 2014, when she was briefly used as a hotel for the 2014 Olympics. Since then, the cruise ship has been known as Celestial Olympia. That is how I cruised on her. I took a five night cruise on board the Celestial Olympia. We cruised all around the Greek islands, often visiting two ports per day, which isn't something you normally do on a cruise. If you wanna go on a Greek cruise and you wanna be surrounded by Greek people, Greek music, Greek food, strongly recommend the Celestial Cruise. Celestial Olympia is the oldest cruise ship that I have personally sailed on and you can definitely tell her age when you're just wandering around the ship. She's been incredibly well looked after. She's not run down. She doesn't look dirty or anything like that. But there's certain features that I think definitely age the ship. If you have a look at this aft section here and you have a look at the wooden decks, you don't really see things like that on modern cruise ships. The Viking Sun was originally put into service in 1972. The Viking Sun has two sisters, the Nordic Princess and the Song of Norway, who we'll talk about next. These three cruise ships were the first purpose-built cruise ships for Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. The Viking Sun was retired by Royal Caribbean Cruise Line in the late 90s, and she has had so many names since then. My favorite name for this ship is the Hyundai Pongni. I don't know if that's how you say it, Hyundai Pongni? Who knows, it's a brilliant name for a ship. The Sun Viking is currently known as MV Oriental Dragon, another amazing name, and she's being used as a casino ship near Malaysia. The Nordic Prince was built in 1971 and she was used mostly for Caribbean cruises, a lot of the time cruising from Miami. Interestingly, when this ship was sold to Sun Cruises, they decided to remove that iconic Royal Caribbean bar from around the funnel. If you had a look at this cruise ship after she'd been sold, I don't really think you would recognize her as a Royal Caribbean ship. 
When she was sold to Sun Cruises, she was renamed Carousel, and in 2004, Carousel was sold to Louis Cruise Lines and renamed Aquamarine. Aquamarine is another amazing cruise ship name. I feel like cruise ship names have gone downhill recently. They're not called amazing things like Aquamarine anymore. In 2011, the ship was sold to Ocean Star Lines and renamed Ocean Star Pacific before she was decommissioned in 2015. When it comes to the Song of Norway, I'm going to have to list these names for you because there's no way I can remember them and you will see why. She is known as the Sun Dream, the Dream Princess, Dream, Clipper Pearl, Clipper Pacific Festival, Ocean Pearl and Formosa Queen. She was one of the first cruise ships that was built specifically for Royal Caribbean and she's had a very, very busy life. When the ship was first built, she could hold a little over 700 passengers. They actually lengthened the cruise ship, they cut her in half and they added in a section in the middle to make her bigger. And after her lengthening, she could hold over a thousand passengers. If you compare that to the modern cruise ships, which can hold 6,000 passengers, that doesn't seem like very much. But for this time, a cruise ship holding a thousand passengers was very, very, very exciting. Very exciting. Song of Norway was a incredibly popular cruise ship for Royal Caribbean and that's why they decided to do this lengthening. They had more demand than they had spaces for and doing the lengthening allowed them to fit 300 people extra per cruise. So it's a no brainer. If you can stretch a cruise ship, I couldn't, but if you can, makes sense. The actual size of this cruise ship was 12 times smaller than Royal Caribbean's biggest cruise ship, Symphony of the Seas. 12 times smaller. She's tiny, but big at the time. She was sold by Royal Caribbean in 1996 and by this point the cruise ships that were being built for Royal Caribbean like Legend of the Seas and Splendor of the Seas were so much bigger and more modern than this cruise ship so it totally makes sense that they would want to upgrade their fleet. Once again for some reason they decided to remove that iconic bar around the funnel. I think it's a shame but we don't know what it was like in that bar. Maybe it was you know you couldn't drink because it was so shaky around the funnel. We will never know because it's gone. After this, the ship went through many, many names and many different companies. In 2007, there was an interesting incident in Rhodes where the ship started listing 10 degrees. 10 degrees might not seem a lot, but to a cruise ship, 10 degrees is a lot, is a lot. The ship had to be evacuated and some of the officers on board were detained. They did find out why the cruise ship was listing, which is a bit strange. I'm gonna have to read it to you because it's odd. So divers who were investigating the incident discovered the hatchways in the hull designed for discharging untreated wastewater into the ocean had been plugged with chunks of wood to prevent the water from getting out. That meant the wastewater was kept on board and failure to pump the water in a, in a good manner resulted in the vessel listing. So how those bits of wood got into that place to stop the water going out, I don't know. But it seems a strange thing to uh, do. The oldest cruise ship that's currently still sailing in the Royal Caribbean fleet was built in 1989. Doesn't sound that old, but compared to the rest of their fleet, that is pretty old. That is the Empress of the Seas. She is a very small ship compared to the rest of the Royal Caribbean fleet, and I wouldn't be surprised if they sail her off at some point soon. There have been a lot of cruise ships sold and scrapped in 2020. To learn about them and what's happened to them, check out this playlist. This is all of the cruise ships that have been so far sold or scrapped in 2020.